Hey everyone, Master Model Amanda Olson here. Uh, normally I do this uh, live webinar at 11 a.m. on Wednesdays, but today I am watching my granddaughter, uh, Sylvia. So she just went down for a nap and I'm not guaranteed that she will sleep from 11 to 12. So I just went ahead and started a little early. If you are hoping to uh, catch me at 11 and you missed it, it, it'll still be up on YouTube and you can watch the, the replay. All right. Hey everyone, Master Mom Amanda Olson. Sorry about catch that. Catch me at 11 and you missed it. it, it this is a little bit new to me, so <laughs> there. Okay. All right. So I want, this is the webinar where I go over my uh, parenting survival guide. And today we are talking about uh, quitting or not quitting. And let's see here. Go ahead and get that slide up for you guys. So chapter eight in the book talks about um, when your child is in an activity and then they say, I don't wanna go or um, I want to quit. How, how do we work with that? All right. How do we deal with that? What's the right way? What's the wrong way? Um, I, you know, dealing in the martial arts, we have goals that we set, you know, you have your short term goals and your long term goals. And so I see a lot of kids, you know, getting a little bogged down or weary or you know, it gets harder the closer you get to the end of the goal. For us, it's, you know, the first big, big goal is the black belt. And it does, you know, it's not easy to get a black belt. And sometimes that'll be a reason for kids wanting to stop. So let's let's go into that. And there's other, all kinds of activities. It's, it's pretty universal between, you know, whatever it is that your child is involved in that they want to get out of, okay? It doesn't, it doesn't have to be a specific activity. Uh, it's general rules. Uh, for all of that. So I apologize for the mowers. That's one reason I do it at 11 is because uh, my neighbor mows at 10 o'clock on Wednesday and they're usually done. So if you're hearing that in the background, I apologize. But uh, chapter eight, uh, quitting. Uh, how long should you try until Jim Rohn? He's got some great motivational things if you want to look him up and, and read. Uh, so much of his things can help you yourself stick with things give yourself some uh, motivation sometimes it's not that it's not the child that wants to quit but sometimes it's the parent that wants to quit you know we're, we're driving them we're paying for things we're there when they win we're there when they lose they're you know we're they forget something we've got to make an extra rare errand to get that so sometimes the commitment is on uh, our part and we are the ones that have to continue on until the end, you know, and that's, that's part of what we can teach our children. Um, so a couple of things to consider is the activity one that you believe is good for them. That is very important because if you, if you are behind what it is that they're doing, you're going to be able to support them through the tough times. And you're also going to help them understand that, you know, cliche, when the going gets tough, the tough get going, you know, they just dig in their heels and pull up their bootstraps and make it happen. You got to work hard and you got to get through it. And, you know, something that you work really hard for and you earn, uh, whether it's a grade or something in athletics, there's, there is a celebration and a joy. And we talked about that uh, last week, kind of the bragging rights uh, that, you accomplish something. There is a confidence building when you finish something all the way through and you complete it and you're done. And, and it may not even be, you know, sometimes you're not happy that you finished it, but you are happy that you did finish it. You know, you might be like, oh, I'm glad this is over. There is a sense of I can, a sense of pride that you can finish something that you start, that you have what it takes. And uh, those are important lessons. Sorry, Pearl's joining us today. <laughs> um, those are some lessons that you can take with you forever and ever and ever, whether you learn it when you're seven or 70. Um, so 
letting your child quit eats things easily, just letting them get out of it because they don't want to, or you're tired of dealing with it. it it's not really the best long-term option as we're trying to raise our children to be independent and uh, productive citizens of society. So quitting is something I wanna address today. And the first question is, is this an activity uh, that you believe is good for them? All right, so I know right now in the climate of things, a lot of uh, parents are looking at uh, tutoring, extra uh, educational classes for their kids, maybe you know, online learning wasn't um, had its struggles for sure, and maybe they feel a little behind in some areas, you know. And so, there probably were some breakdown moments as they were trying to learn something online. Um, math, probably, I would think, would be one of the most difficult ones to learn online. Um, and then, you you know that learning these things and making good grades and being able to progress to the next level you know that these are important things for them and i bet in their academics especially this last year many of the kids wanted to quit or not log on or you know it was hard it was too hard and they wanted to give up but we all as you know community with children you know helped them persevere through that we tried to make it as um, easy and pleasant as possible, but we didn't let them quit. You couldn't quit third grade, okay? You had to keep you had to keep going. So you know that it's good for them, and you you know when you say I one of the things I hear is I don't want to make them do something they don't want to do. Well, that's not really that's not really true. And I state that in the book, you know, there are lots of things that you make your children do that they don't want to do. I think what the real answer is, is we don't want the aftermath or the struggle or the tantrum or the bad attitude about making them do something that they don't want to do, you know? Um, this, and we're talking about things that we believe that are good for them. That is something that is in, important to make sure if you're considering giving in to that, I don't want to go anymore. I don't want to do that. I, I don't like that. And they're complaining. If you're doing that, then you want to make sure that it's not motivated by yourself, but that you are, you know, you're behind this. This is important to you. You want to keep this, keep this going. Let's see here for just a second. So if you believe in the activity, commit yourself to the end game. It, it you know, when we enroll people in martial arts, we understand that it's not just the child, but the family has to have the full commitment too. They have to see that this is something that is good for them. This is something that they're going to enjoy. Yes, there's gonna be hard times. There's gonna be times when it's difficult and you have to practice and put all that in, but the family is committed to helping the child get to that long-term goal, which for us is a black belt. So when, when the kids, my kids were little, there was uh, two things that I required that they do. One was a sport and one was uh, music. So they were always involved in either some sort of athletics and some sort of music, along with their education and their other commitments that they had at uh, church and school, you know, things that they were involved in. But those two were things that you couldn't quit. I, I felt strongly that uh, music education at a young age was uh, important for their um, mental development in terms of being able to learn and focus. And it's it's been shown that it really does help, especially with, with math. Music is very mathematical. You know, there are rules that you can, that you know are true. And there's things about math that are the same way. So I, I felt like that was very important in their education. Also, you know, we talked last week on the uh, Daytime Tri-Cities about exposing your children to different things, you know, so there were different instruments that they uh, took lessons in, but they were always doing a musical instrument. So 
that was something that was important to me. So when we signed up for a certain session, a certain length of time in an instrument, especially if you invested in buying that instrument, you know, you talked about that, that there's, there's not just the lesson time, but there's the practice time. And we're going to see this through, whether it's see it through to the recital or the end of the year or whatever the, the long-term goal commitment was. And as they tried the different instruments, you know, they would get through those, get through those times. I have a, just a personal story. I know of a, a child that is a adult now and a professor of music. But the philosophy was as a, as a young child that they be exposed to many different instruments that they always had instruments in the home to, you know, just play around with and think of them as toys and uh, practice and that philosophy for this person worked out great because they were very uh, adept at learning music and they were very musical and they it's now their career so. I tried the same sort of thing and, you know, my kids had lessons and they had access to music and instruments and it never really became their thing, but they always had to, you know, they weren't allowed to quit during the time period that we had committed to. That was, that was the lesson there. When can they quit? Well, there's a couple of things when, when they're old enough to make choices on their own. So sometimes, you know, and each child is different, but, you know, when they were in elementary school and even into middle school, it was, we're doing music lessons. You know, do you want to continue with this instrument this year or do you want to try something new, a different instrument, but there's still going to be music. So at some point they can kind of start choosing which instrument. Uh, and then as they get older and older, it's like, you know, music is not, my thing, I'm in, I'm in high school now or ninth grade or eighth grade. And this is really where my interest and my talents and, you know, where I want to spend my time on this other activity. So they can kind of start making choices on their own. But when they're eight, yeah, they want to quit because they want to play or they're tired of practice or, you know, for any number of reasons, you know, they just, sometimes it's a control thing. You know, I, I get to control what I do today. You're not in charge of me. So, you know, when they're elementary age and even young middle school, they don't, they shouldn't really have that option of, of quitting. You know, you, you make it clear at the beginning that they need to sign up for this and then this is the end game and they go to that point. And then once they reach that end game, then they can, you can, you know, usually by then they're old enough and you can decide, okay, what, uh, what do we want to do now? Or do we want to continue on to, with this and take it to the next level? But you know, my, my personal advice is when they're young, they don't really have all of the knowledge about how important it is to finish something. You know, especially like if they're on a team, you, know, you can't quit mid season just because you don't like basketball. You, know, you made a commitment to the team and parents, we made a commitment to the team. You know, we told the coach we were gonna be on the team. You know, we have to follow that through. And even if it's hard, that's okay. You know, that's the, that's the part where we get confused is that if it's hard, it's not okay. Well, if it's hard, it is okay because we learn perseverance. We learn dedication, we learn commitment, and we learn loyalty. And we learn confidence because we know we can finish things. We know that we have what it takes to get the job done. And a seven-year-old can learn that and they can learn it year after year after year and then when they get older and they are old enough to make these decisions, you don't have to teach them that. You know, I have teenagers that have, you know, signed up for something, you know, it could be uh, at the martial arts school or it could be, you know, at school or church and they have, you know, signed up for it and they're like, they'll come to me and they're like, Master Olson, I've got to, you know, I really wanted to go to camp, but I made this commitment to this team at the beginning of the year and I've got to finish that out. It's not really my thing, but I committed. And when they come to me and tell me things like that on their own, then I know they have learned that lesson. And it's not something that they have to be taught anymore, that they learn commitment and they learn, you know, sticking with something and being responsible. So, so quitting takes away all that, takes away 
it teaches that commitment is important, that being responsible is, you know, as somebody else will take care of it or it's okay. You know, it, it teaches them not to be dedicated to their word or their choices. And the quitting can also make them, you know, I've had kids tell me, well, I quit everything I start. That is a learned thing, right? Is you learn to quit and you learn not to quit, all right? And that's where our, our third little box there on the screen is quitting becomes a habit. And like, if they're already saying that when they're nine years old, that, well, I quit everything that I start, or the parent says he quits everything that he starts, uh, we've developed a habit. And actually parents, you're helping them develop that if you're like letting them quit everything just because they don't like it on Wednesday, all right, doesn't mean they should quit. They need to follow through to the end to learn how to stick with things. Otherwise, when they get into times in their life where everything really is up to them, you know, adulthood and sometimes even high school, college, um, they're just going to not follow through, not finish. They're just going to quit. So, there can be some real detriment to letting children quit or labeling them as someone who always quits something. And there can be huge rewards, huge rewards for teaching children not to quit and to follow through. So we talked about the right time and the right time is when uh, one, if you don't think it's a good activity for them, if, if they are not benefiting emotionally, physically, socially, uh, academically, from this activity, you know, that would be a time to quit. When they're old enough to start making decisions on their own. You know, here's, here's the thing, like, so Katie played violin and she played mandolin. So we, fit, we finished our violin lesson, our, our committed time that we had with it. And she didn't wanna do the violin anymore. Well, it wasn't her choice to not do music so we had to choose another instrument and that's when she chose the mandolin. So I, she had some choice in the matter, but she also didn't have some choice. She had to continue music lessons. We could just change it to a new instrument. And the same kind of thing with athletics. That was the, another thing that I had that was very important. Of course they did martial arts, but um, I wanted to make sure that they were in athletics all the time because I truly believe that if you grow up doing physical activity, you know what it feels like, especially as a teenager. And I've talked about this, you know, when I was in high school myself as an athlete, if you don't train your body right, if you don't take care of yourself, eat right, sleep right, don't abuse substances, you know, you can't perform in your athletics to your best of your abilities. And, you know, especially in high school that starts to get really competitive um, and you want to be able to perform. So it, it teaches you how to take care of yourself. And I think that's a very important lesson. And that, that was something I wanted my kids to have is how to live a healthy lifestyle. When I wasn't the one doing all the cooking or making the choices, you know, when they, when they grew up. So uh, one of the uh, athletics that Katie did, my daughter was horseback riding. And she was really enjoying it, doing very well. And it was something, you know, it was a commitment for me too. It was a little bit of a drive and uh, it took quite a bit of time from my day because you weren't allowed to drop off at horseback riding lessons, which I wouldn't want to do anyway. Um, so, you know, I would be there the whole time and these were, these were private lessons. And so I would be able to watch her the whole time. Well, we committed to a certain you know, a year or season. I can't remember the exact amount of time. It was a little while ago. But in one of her uh, later lessons, she had been going for quite a while and the horse was a jumper. So she was learning to jump with the horse. And the horse had decided it did not want to jump that day and it actually threw her. And this is something you watch and it feels like it's in slow motion because you're there's no way you can get to her. There's no way you can catch her, you know, uh, you, you couldn't jump in front of the horse anyway. So, you know, watching that, it was pretty scary. It was scary for the trainer. It was scary for Katie and it was scary for me. And fortunately she was okay. She was 
kind of mentally and emotionally shaken up, you know, and, uh, but physically she was fine. And the trainer, you know, came over to me and just, you know, of course she was upset <laughs> and concerned, but, but I knew that this was part of it. You know, when you sign up for horseback riding lessons, you realize that there's potential for this type of accident. So I told her, the trainer, I said, I really want Katie to get back on that horse and finish today's lesson um, without the jumping, of course, because the horse had already made that very clear. But we could walk around the arena a few times and take the horse back and finish the grooming and the end of the lesson. So that's what we did. And we, we finished that. And we got home and everybody just kind of had this whoo, emotional release. And, you know, talking to Katie at that time, she was probably about nine or 10. And I was like, you know, it would have been very easy and it would have been easy for me as a mom to quit at that point. Okay, that's that was a little scary. But I also knew that if I let her quit or if I let myself quit as a mom because it's not the only time she's going to be in a dangerous situation eventually she's going to have to learn how to drive a car and drive off out of the the driveway and I'm going to have to be okay with that um you know we talked about it and we talked about how important it was to get back on the horse we talked about how important it was to continue with your lessons and learn how to get through that and, and quite honestly, because she was physically okay, it was getting through it mentally. It was getting through that hardship emotionally, you know, uh, for me, for her, and even for the trainer, you know, because you set yourself back up into uh, a situation like that again, and you've got to get through it and finish it. So that was something that, you know, a beneficial thing of not quitting, even though things had gotten scary and hard. And it doesn't have to be athletics that gets scary and hard. Uh, reading a book for some kids, you know, that it's, they might have a learning disability or uh, they might have a hard time sitting still. There's all kinds of uh, things, you know, focusing issues. It, it might be hard and scary to look at a big book and say, I've got to get to the end of this. You know, even if it's, even if it's just that thick, because we all start somewhere. But helping them get through that and realizing that you can is huge. And that, that way, as a parent, when they do get to that point where they're making choices on their own, when they do get to that point where they're driving themselves out of the driveway or flying in a plane and going off to college somewhere, you can, you know, of course, we're going to be concerned and worry and have those parenting feelings, but you can also have that confidence that they're going to be okay. They're, they know how to make good choices. They know the consequences of bad choices. They know how to stick through things. They know it's going to be hard sometimes, but they also know that they have what it takes to get through it. And that's why letting young kids, especially, you know, for me, like 15 and under, letting them just quit because it got hard or because they got bored or because uh, they wanted to do something else that day, or they wanted to control. Um, you don't get to tell me what to do. I'm, I'm in charge of me, that sort of thing. Uh, letting them do that is, is in the long run, very uh, detrimental to their development and to their confidence. So parenting in the quitting realm is commitment on your part. And we've talked about that a lot too, even as you're trying to teach your child good behavior um, and discipline. Sometimes you're the one that really has to show the discipline before they get the hang of it. You know, you have to stick to the rules. You have to stick to your philosophy. You have to stick to what you said. Your word is your bond, in other words, with your child. And they know that if you say yes or you say no, that that's what you mean and that that's what's going to happen. And that's where the arguing stops. So when you have told the child you've signed up for three months of this or you've signed up for two years of this and this is what we're going to do, it doesn't matter to me if you complain or not, we're going, you're going, and you're going to do your best. Once they realize that you mean that, the arguing stops. 
you know, you may have a couple of weeks of, oh, I don't want to go, or they're dragging their feet, you know, getting ready to go, or, you know, all of these things that they do to make you feel guilty or make you feel like you're a bad parent because you're making them do this thing. That, that is just them playing on your emotions. And back to the second box there, is the activity one that you believe is good for them? Well, if it is, then you make the commitment and, and you teach them how to get through it. And in the process, you teach them that uh, what you say goes. You teach them that arguing and whining and complaining is not going to change things. And they need to learn how to um, just suck it up buttercup, really. <laughs> you know, just, just do what you're told and get the job done. And when they do that, they're going to they're gonna learn how to be a team player because they are part of the family team. And the, te the team doesn't revolve around one person. Sometimes we forget that. We let the child call the shots. So um, when they're part of the team, you want to make sure that they understand part of that is not causing chaos in your home and disharmony. Part of their job is to be the child, follow the parents' lead, obey the rules. You know, that's that's what they are supposed to do as part of the family team, help out, that sort of thing. So just, just keep that in mind. When your child starts telling you that they want to quit, telling you that um, they don't like it anymore, or there's this kid that's bothering me. I mean, there's, I mean, I have heard every reason. And usually if we take a little time, we can get down to the real issue. And often, often it is that it's getting hard and they don't wanna to have to do something that's hard. And parents, it's okay if your children have to do something that's hard, all right? That's how they learn what they're made of. And that's how they learn how to overcome because you know as a parent as an adult as someone who has a job whether it's in the home or outside the home you know life is hard you know relationships are hard you know that uh it's not always going to be a smooth sailing and people aren't going to let you quit they're not going to let you quit and go home and you know if you just quit your job how are you going to take care of your kids you know, just because you didn't like it or just because it got hard. Make plans to change things, but you can't just quit. And that's what we want to teach our kids is you can't quit. You don't want to quit on people. You don't want to quit on your job. You don't want to quit on uh, commitments that you've made, even commitments that you've made to yourself. Things that you've said, okay, I, you know, I really need to do this, whether it's a health thing or an education thing, a career change, uh, relationships, we make promises to ourselves all the time. We make commitments to ourselves all the time. And we want our children to learn that they have what it takes to keep those commitments as they go through adolescence and into adulthood. So that is chapter eight in the Parenting Survival Guide here. And you can certainly pick one up at Olson's Martial Arts Academy. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and um, Comment, share the video if you thought it was helpful. If your child's going through that time right now where they just want to quit something, ask yourself, is this something I believe is important to them? Why are they quitting? Why are they wanting to quit? Is there a bigger lesson to be learned, a more important lesson to be learned by sticking through it than just what they want to do or don't want to do? Is this a power play? Are they trying to, you know, say, you know, what I say goes and you're not the boss of me. Is this something that I have to commit to teach them that is incorrect behavior? So many questions, you know, not that, not the car ride, not the car ride to the lesson or the car ride to school. You know, that's not the time to think about it because you're upset if they're, especially if they're really throwing a, a fit and, you know, making you have a bad day, you know, don't think about it right then because, yeah, you want to quit in the middle of that. You want to make that pain stop. 
think about it when you're alone and quiet and you have some time to say, is this something that's going to benefit my child, you know, in the long run? Is it maybe not even the activity, but is it the lesson that we don't quit? Is that what's going to benefit them in the long run? Uh, teaching them perseverance, teaching them that you are the boss of the family. Um, are those things that are important to teach your children? Because teaching them to quit, letting them quit becomes a habit. And that is not something that we want our children to grow up uh, feeling or knowing or thinking that they're quitters, you know, that, oh, why should I even try to go through this, you know, advancement program at work because I quit everything I do. No, you do not want your child thinking that way. So we have to teach them to stick with things. We have to teach them to follow through, just like we have to teach them how to do everything else. All right. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully, um, you know, you, if you have more questions on the topic, please feel free to put those in the comments. I'll read those and reply. And I'm sure other people have the same questions. So they'll appreciate those as well. Guys, y'all have a great day. And again, sorry, I had to go a little early, but Miss Sylvia, my granddaughter decided to take a nap now and that's okay, all right? Sometimes you gotta go with the flow, all right? Have a great day and I will see